It was very weird, very jealous comparison. When I was your age, I had all these men buying me this, buying me that. What is up, everyone? I'm your host, Alan Iced, and welcome to Noche de Pendejadas, your favorite talk show turned podcast, in donde yo traigo a tus influencers favoritos para platicar y posiblemente sacarles sus trapitos al sol. Please help me welcome tonight's guest, Miss Wendy Lee. Hey, what's hello, up? Hello, hello, hello. How are you? I'm good. How are you? You look good, by the way. No, you look good. Let Thank me you. let me tell you guys something. <laughs> Wendy was on her way to film and she texts me she's like i'm gonna take off my makeup yeah why bitch you look good well it's because the camera quality looks good but in person like i no bitch you look good in person and look at it i think you're just in your head yeah i honestly feel like you're in your head because you honestly look better than me in person like your makeup so i was like girl no exageres but aquí la tenemos otra vez you guys for those of you guys that don't know me and wendy have been knowing each other for so many years i want to yeah. say since like 2015 no, yeah. 20, no, yeah, 2015. 2015. But we officially met 2016. That is crazy. Yeah. And we grew up in the same city. Yeah. So it's practically like we were in each... Our, our fucking lives were supposed yeah. to cross at one point and they crossed in high school. Y pues aquí la tenemos, you guys. También para los que se acuerdan, Wendy was also on the show on the first season in 2020. It's been over three years since we've had you here. And I don't know, I just feel like it's a good time to catch up. I feel like your life has changed so much. Y pues yo te quiero entrevistar para saber what is up with Miss Wendy Lee now. So before we get started, I want to go ahead and give you the opportunity to tell me who you are and what you do for those at home that may not know you para que te conozcan un poquito más. Okay, so my name is Wendy. I go by Miss Wendy Lee. I'm a social media content creator. I went viral due to making my funny Vietnamese uh uh, videos making fun of my mom and then people would start seeing that I would get ready and I actually look cute back Me? then yeah, they're like, like oh it. she's cute too and you're like wow she's not just yeah, funny but I feel like it was mainly like my funny content and I also my upbringing growing up in Santa Ana I have like a really strong knowledge of a hispanic background that's what people yeah. liked about me too so i think that's what it is you were relatable in many aspects mm -hmm. so antes de que empecemos you guys the last time wendy was on the show we weren't able to take a shot because estaba embarazada pero hoy sí cheers, cheers. and that's okay. 69 cup mm. Mm. Mm -mm -mm. <sighs> <sighs> Ooh. Okay, vamos a empezar con lo que yo siempre le pregunto a todos. I'm going to ask you what I ask everyone. How was Miss Wendy Lee growing up? Girl, I'm still growing up. There's like so many things that I went through um, being on social media until now. I wanted to stop, start, off, start off by saying, I'm so proud of you, by the way. Oh, like the you. thing is like you actually did this. You committed to it. And how many seasons have you had already? This is the fourth. Like that's crazy. That girl, is crazy. I would have just been like, I'm doing it. I'm never starting it. <laughs> <You're> <laughs> like, I'm done. And the fact that you had like four, that's crazy. You had so many guests and celebrities too. Just not regular like influencers yeah. that other people might think you're not even a celebrity. You're just an influencer. So I'm happy for Thank you. Thank you. Uh, me growing wise, I feel like becoming a mom, I also had to change a lot of my mindset. But I'm still growing in a way. I'm only 28 this yeah. year. So I'm still childish sometimes. But it has to be to a realistic standpoint, you yeah. know. But also, we known each other when we were hella young, too. Yeah. And you were kind of like a saint baby. And I you was. wouldn't drink or do anything. And I would be like, okay, it's like 9 o'clock. I have to go home and get ready for the club. <laughs> <laughs> no, literally, bitch. Yeah. That's how our friendship was. If you guys mm. don't know, Wendy, how old are you now? I'm turning 28 in September. Yeah. So you are three years older, but I feel like when we met those three years, obviously now I feel like those three years aren't a big deal. But when we met, I was, 
I want to say 17 you at the were, time. You were, you were really young. I, I was super like, young and you and were already over eight. Yeah. So uh, we would hang out during the day. You sleep over sometimes. Like we were so close. I love You know it. what memory sparked the other day, maybe like a month ago about you? We were by Jen Korean Barbecue, the one that's in Tustin. Mm-hmm. Um, <laughs> and me and Danny were just driving and we were like, dude, you remember that one time where we slept over at Wendy's house and it was like fucking 12 o'clock and we went for boba? Yeah. Like, that. you probably don't you, fucking remember, Do you remember, bitch. like, me bringing the mattress and leaving in it my living room? Yeah, and I mattress- remember we used to just sleep <laughs> yeah. there, too, and just and fucking fact, talk. And you know what's so crazy? The fact that you guys would actually want to come over, it made me so happy. Aww. And now that you don't even reply to me when it takes you. Ah, <laughs> man, <laughs> she's like, I'm going to use this like, to call Hello? over. I'm like, como? Yo quiero saber un poquito más about your childhood. How was Wendy in elementary? How yeah. were you growing up, growing up? Like, Why? young Wendy. I moved around a lot. Like, I went to, like, almost six or five different schools, Mm -hmm. maybe more. In middle school, moving from Huntington Beach to Santa Ana was, like, mainly Hispanic. No, mainly whites and Asian. Like, like it was a lot of different, like, a mixture of people. And going to a primarily, like, Hispanic district, it was a culture shock. And, like... Everyone has this misconception that all Asians are the same. Yeah. So they'll like make fun and be like, oh, what does Ching Chow or whatever I mean? I'm like, oh, I don't understand that. Like, and that type of like Ching or whenever you hear that, it's like Chinese. Like, oh, that's Chinese. I don't understand that. I'm Vietnamese. They're like, isn't that the same shit? I'm like, no. Because if you put a girl that's Korean in front of me and had her speak Korean to me, I would be like, okay. You're like, like, what are you saying, I'm bitch? Like, huh? And I spoke bit to her, Vietnamese. She would be like, what? So we're not the same. Yeah. We're Asian. But we're not the same, like, nationality. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, in that time, a lot of... We're young. We're, like, eighth graders. We're, like, high schoolers. Kids are evil. So, like, people make fun of me, like, oh, um, does your parents always go to the DMV because they can't drive? And, like, I have jokes myself, but the thing is, are you ready for them? Because <laughs> I, can say, I can say a lot of fucked up shit. Like, yeah. hella fucked up shit. But the fact, imagine... You're in a room of 30 kids and everyone's Hispanic and you're the only Asian. You're yeah. getting jumped right away if you make a joke. But I took everything. They'll ask me, how does dog taste? Like I'm like, I don't know. Like I know your dog went missing last week. I ate him. So you would just come back? I would just come back. But the thing is, when bitches would actually want to fight me, I was like, mm. Just for you guys to know, um, me and Wendy... No, I knew of Wendy way before we actually met. We both grew up in Santa Ana. Santa Ana, I feel like everyone knows each other. Yeah. In a way. Yes. Like, at least on Facebook. I'm not even talking about when social media was, like, Alan Ice or Miss Wendy Lee. I'm talking about, like, shuffling days. I knew of you, and I remember seeing you online, like, on Facebook. And, like, I never would have imagined you going through that. Obviously, you know, you've been very outspoken, and you talked about going through racism at a young age. Do you feel like that affected you in any way i felt like that built character because i didn't really have like a lot of people tell me to my face like oh you're a fucking like chink or whatever ching chong chinese bitch go back to china because they never really said things like that to me this bitch did follow me home from school telling me i'm gonna jump you because i don't like you i'm like why because you're a chinita and i'm like fuck she's fucking fat as shit (laughs) she's like she's gonna fuck me up bitch that fucking fly just landed on you Where is the fly? <laughs> on the eye beard? Right here. You didn't you didn't feel the fly? I, I was did. looking at it. I was like, it's gonna land on you. Bitch, I didn't feel it. I swear to God. <laughs> okay, just, it's the shot, bitch. I'm all numb. It's all the Botox. I don't even feel my own body. It built character for me. I feel like it was fucked up. I feel like this generation now, you can't be like, yeah. you can't do those things. But the thing is, if you really take a step back, a lot of comedians make racist jokes. Yeah. And it's fucking funny. So, you know, I honestly feel like everyone has racist thoughts and racist comments about people, but they just don't want to say it. And the thing is, as a human, you just correct yourself. Because yeah. I used to say the N-word all the time. Not the ER. I never said to a black person, I hate you because you're, yeah. you know, I used to say it like music wise, referring it to a boy, you know, you know, what's so crazy now that you're actually touching that I feel like growing up in Santa Ana, not that it was okay, but I feel like it was super normalized. I feel like, you know, Hispanics have, you know, uh, a thing of using the N word, yeah. not the ER, but just like the N word yes. referring it to a boy, yeah. you know, he's yeah. my N, yeah. he's my this, he's or my stupid. Whatever. And I feel like obviously yes. it's bad, but as a kid, we didn't see it as bad. Obviously now as an adult, I was like, you know what? I eliminated that whole word out of my vocabulary, but it does have a lot to do with where you grow up and how you grow up. Yes. And then there's some people who's like, oh, we give you the past. And then the other 
other people don't do that. So, like, you know, we just take it out of our vocabulary. It's a lot of history. Yeah. A lot of sad history behind it. And I, I took the time to educate myself. And, you know, I respect it, you know. And also, the music back then. Yeah. Um, everyone said it. And, like, it was, like, that song, my... You know, so everyone was saying it, but now no one says anymore. And I'm not afraid to speak about it because yeah. I never came from that aspect. So, yeah. And I feel like that's a good point to touch because even me, like as a kid, I remember in eighth grade, like everyone would fucking use it. I don't know if maybe you guys can relate. Growing up in Santa Ana, I feel like it was something that was, you know, said out loud without really thinking about it or yeah. the history or really being educated mm -hmm. i think it wasn't until high school years where i literally was like you know what i don't think that's her word to say yeah do you know what i mean but yeah. i just feel like that goes with like the lack of being educated yes entirely just, someone just telling us and it's getting to the point now where people dm me and they're like you shouldn't even be listening to music with the word in it and i'm like what the fuck? <laughs> you know, like, no, like, that's ridiculous. I'm just like, I ignored her. I was like, shut up, girl. Like, that's so stupid. So obviously, you know, you've been very vocal about your relationship with your mom. Um, for those of you guys that don't know, Wendy, you know, growing up, I don't know about now, which we'll talk about later. You know, you've had a very toxic relationship with your mom. Can you tell us a little bit more about that? Yeah, my mom's just a typical Asian narcissist mom can you guys imagine me going to school dealing with hate already and having a bunch of cholitas wanting to jump me because they hated me <laughs> and then coming home and having my mom torment me and like would pull my hair cut my extensions like she really traumatized me growing up i feel like i don't want to talk too much about it because it'll just be a long story but my mom's very like a narcissist it's, it's her way or the highway she would force me to do things I didn't want to do like if I didn't want to go to the store with her she'll take my phone she'll take my laptop she won't let me stay home she'll take the remote where I walk I won't watch tv it was very weird very jealous comparison when I was your age I had all these men buying me this buying me that and like oh you're fat uh, like everything's like fat 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 like you're not good enough like oh your hair is ugly like it's just never good enough with her and back then I would work so hard for her validation because I desperately wanted her love I don't know how it feels like to have daddy issues because yeah. my dad was always there I love my dad but the fact that my mom was still present but she broke me yeah. and I feel like growing up as a woman now I had those character traits of her toxic behavior in my own relationship and when Tony be telling me you're acting like your mom I'm like fuck you yeah, you yeah. get all mad. Yeah, I get. I'm like, I am though, and I hate that. I fucking hate that. Do you feel like you know now as an adult, now as you've seen things as a mom, because you know you're a mom too. Do you feel like you see things differently? I've asked her one time if she ever had postpartum depression with me. She's like, "What the fuck is that?" Like, I just had you. I like, what do you mean sad? I don't have time to be fucking sad. I just gave birth to you, raised you, and that's it. And I'm like the fuck she's like it's the media which is true you know yeah. and a lot of people are different now the generation's different i feel like back then people from vietnam like come to america have a family yeah and like that's it that's all they care for i feel like when i see dominic and Roy spill something i just be like uh oh clean it up it annoys me but my mom would beat the shit out of me when i would spill something oh shit and she'll it was be that like, bad you're a girl you don't spill stuff i'm like huh and so this day when i spill water at a club I'm like, I'm sorry. And I feel embarrassed. And I'll like almost cry a little bit. Because, like it'll trigger yeah, you. Yeah, because like my mom will smack me upside the head. Like, you're a girl. Don't be spilling stuff. And I'm like, oh, okay. So like, it's just little things. And like me seeing my kids doing something bad. The thing is, I don't hit my children. I spank them on the butt once in a while. And that's okay. Yeah. Call CPS, girl. They, I've been waiting for them to come. I don't care. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> Yeah, because they're like, you're, I'm calling CPS. Girl, here's the number. Call it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I'll call yeah. for you, baby. They don't get scared of me. And like, I always yell at my kids, but the thing is, you know that I'm a loud bitch. Yeah. Whenever I yell at them, they just laugh at me. They're like, ha. <laughs> Are you yeah. serious? Like, they're all like, and I'm like, what the fuck? <laughs> like, we but did something when good. When I give them the mom stare, they know it's real. Like, yeah, they know it's real. But when I'm like, Donna, stop it. He's all like, hee, hee, hee. <laughs> He's like, mom got angry. Yeah, oh. like, no, he doesn't care. And I don't hit my children like like how yeah. my mom did. You know why I'm so good at taking pictures of people? I would vlog for her before vlogging was a thing. I wasn't, like, probably, like, the fifth grade. She'll, like, vlog me walking into Target and caught me, like, off guard. And if I didn't do it right, she'll get so fucking mad at me. She'll beat me up in the car. My mom's delusional. She takes photos at Ikea and sends it to her friends in Vietnam. And they're saying it's, like, our home. Like, that's how, like, 
my mom is. And that's why when I watch Cindy's thing and she has a really bad relationship with her mom, I related to her at that point. And the fact that her mom's on IG Live talking about it sometimes, I'm like, girl, if my mama did that, I'll probably over th- go over there and probably be like, what the fuck are you doing, girl? She don't even have IG, but she'd be finding me on Google. So uh-huh. she's stuck. Shall be emailing yeah. you, bitch. I've heard you talked a little bit about the IKEA story. You know, um, no, I've actually heard you talk about yeah, it yeah. like entirely. But I feel like the people that maybe might be watching this might not know. Can you tell us a little bit more about that? I just think my mom's like a fake flexer. Like she's just trying to flex in Vietnam that we have all this money when we don't. Like she, I even got in trouble like once by this one girl. So this is a funny story. I never spoke about. It. It's embarrassing though. <laughs> it's really embarrassing. So. My dad was doing really good, and we were finally moving into our new home, and we haven't lived in a house since elementary, and we've been living in an apartment and a mobile home for so long, and I was so happy, and she showed me the photo of the house, and I'm like, oh my God, this house is gorgeous. Yeah. I posted it, and I'm like, my guy, my friends, look, like I'm moving into this beautiful home. This bitch DMs me, why are you posting a photo of my house? And I'm like, what do you mean, your house? I asked my mom, like, whose house is this? She's like... Oh, I just took a picture of that house. The house that we're moving into is across the street. And to this day, that bitch fucking hates me. She fucking hates me. And I'm like, it's just a funny story. And I'm like, why is my mom so weird? And I'm not a weird bitch, Alan. Yeah. I don't do that. That's fucking embarrassing. <laughs> and I'm like, my mom's sick. So what, she would post that other house as online to make... She just people- had it in her phone. And she showed me. She's like, this is the house that we're moving into. And I'm like, I love it, mom. Like, I'm so grateful. Like, you did that shit. No, it's the house across the street. It's, <laughs> it's fucking ugly. It's a one-story home. Do you feel like now, you know, as you've gotten older, as you've experienced things in life, do you feel like, you know, your communication with her is a little different? I haven't talked to her in a year. You haven't talked to her in I've a year? I've talked to her in everything. My dad doesn't even talk to me because I don't talk to her. My dad sides with her. And I love my dad. I just send him money once in a while. That's it. And he'll be, he only calls me when he's at work. Cause if he calls me at home, she'll get mad. So yeah. Was there anything like in specific to you that you were like, you know what? Like I'm done with this. My like after straw. so many years, yeah. what was My your last straw? My mom always has a habit of thinking that I'm always dogging her. Like she always thinks that I'm always like low key mad dogging her on the side. So she was watching Royce. We had Dominic. We went all the way to Rancho Cucamonga to pick up two car seats because I had a friend that worked at that Nordstrom and she gave me a discount for two car seats for like the price of basically almost one. She said, I'm dropping off Royce at four o'clock. It was barely 3.30. We stopped by Boba by my house. It's like five minutes away. We barely got there. We didn't even get the fucking Boba. She said, I'm already here. Where are you? I'm like, okay, I'm going right now. I see her. I grab Royce. I'm like, okay, bye, mom. See you later. Tony's bringing the new car seats, whatever. Car seats or or strollers. I forgot what we got exactly. Everything's cool. Two hours went by. I got four missed calls from my dad. I'm like, oh, shit, what the fuck? What happened? But I should have known. I should have known. She always does this. I picked up. Dad screaming, why the fuck would you doubt your fucking mom? You're disrespectful. Uh, Tony doesn't even say hi to your mom either. What kind of fucking son is he? And I'm like, Tony always says hi to mom. He's bringing in the stroller, the car seat. Like, what are you talking about? And she always does this. Like, if she ever met you and you don't say hi to her right away, he didn't say hi to me. I've met her, actually. Yeah, I remember one time, I I think it was at the mall. Yeah, at your meeting greet. Yeah, yeah, yeah. She, uh, you know, obviously, I remember you guys barely even talking that day. She just likes me for the status. She just likes saying, this is my daughter. She says what she do. But she doesn't look like that in person. She looks ugly. She'd be yeah. saying that? Yeah. She's like, if only people knew how you look like in person, they wouldn't like you. And the thing is, you know what's so crazy? My mom self-projects. She says everything about me that I live a fake life, I flex on the internet, but that's her though. Yeah. She'd be posting a photo of a woman that's not even our grandma, that's not even her mom, saying, I love my mom, I miss her so much, and that's not even my grandma. Oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to embarrass my mother on the internet, you know, because like she might like she's having someone translate as we speak watching this. Yeah. But like my mom's sick. Like, and it's weird. I don't think she's bipolar. I don't think she has like, a mental disability. I just think it's loneliness, trauma. Yeah. And maybe she needs validation in life. And the thing is, like, I don't know. My dad, my dad loves her. But yeah. I don't they're still so together. Yeah, they're still together. They just don't sleep in the same room because he snores too loud. <laughs> do you feel like your relationship with your dad obviously you said you haven't talked to him either in a long time do you feel like 
it's affected your relationship with your father too? Yeah, I miss my dad. He called me the other day though, but I was showering and I called him back. He's like, I called you on accident. I'm like, okay, dad, whatever. He's like, all right, Then he bye. called me back. He's like, you didn't call me on Father's Day. And I'm like, yes, I did. I called you twice. And he's all like, oh, I did leave my phone at home though. And I'm like, what the fuck are you talking about, bro? But I caught up with him. I love my dad. My dad always been present. Like, I don't, I don't relate to daddy issues because yeah. my dad's always been there. He would take me to those nightclubs at like 16 with booty shorts and a bra. Me? He's like, he's like, baby, please put on a jacket. Like he never slut shamed me. He never told me like, don't act like that. You're a girl. Like my dad even told me too, if you're ever going to send naked photos to guys, at least you're sending all them the same pictures. Yeah. So no one can say, oh, I have a different photo. Like my dad put me game on. And like <laughs> I tell people, my dad used to go to Ross and buy me underwear. He was so like Hello Kitty underwear. He's like, my daughter loves Hello Kitty. I'm gonna buy this for her. Yeah. And people are like, that's weird. I'm like, that's my dad, bitch. Like you're fucking weird. You're thinking weird. Yeah, like you're yeah. the one that's making yeah. it weird. Like yeah, my yeah. dad knows like he has a daughter. Like, what are you talking about, bitch? Yeah. Like, weird as fuck. So, and it's literally just Hello yeah. Kitty underwear. Yeah, I'm like my friend told me that she would do cartwheels when she was a little girl. Her dad would yell at her. I'm like, why? He's like, oh, because I was like spreading my legs. I'm like, what the fuck? Your dad's fucking weird as fuck. Like, like if he's thinking about it that way, yeah, it's because like, he's thinking about weird. it weird. Yeah, like, no, my dad has never treated me like that. Yeah. And my dad has told me too, like, like you don't need to stay up, be a stay-at-home mom. Go to work. You don't need a guy. You don't need to cook. You don't need to clean. You can hire people. Yeah. Yeah, my dad always told me that. So I don't give a fuck. Today's video is sponsored by my friends over at HelloFresh. With HelloFresh, you get farm fresh, pre proportionized ingredients, and seasonal recipes delivered right to your doorstep. Skip trips to the grocery store and count on HelloFresh to make home cooking easy fun and affordable. That's why it's America's number one meal kit. Fall is right around the corner and HelloFresh is here to help you plan for a busy season ahead with tasty dishes delivered to your door. Simply choose your recipes and pick your delivery day then lay back and enjoy the last days of summer knowing your dinner is covered. Y otra cosa amigas, does it seem like your family is hungry like at all times? Add snacks, sides, and more to your weekly HelloFresh order. Just simply shop HelloFresh Market and take your picks from a curated selection of over 100 add-on items. A mí a lo personal, amigas, me encanta HelloFresh because si ustedes saben, I'm on my weightlifting journey. And honestly, cooking healthy meals is so hard for me because I don't know what to cook. And with HelloFresh, I'm able to cook bomb, healthy, and new meals all the time so I don't have to get bored of that rice and chicken all the time. And I also love that HelloFresh is super, super easy to follow. Their instructions, you guys, hasta tu hermanita las puedes seguir. If you guys want to go ahead and sign up for HelloFresh, don't worry. I got you. Go to HelloFresh.com slash 50 Allen and use code 50 Allen for 50% off plus free shipping. That is HelloFresh.com slash 50 allen and use code 50 allen for 50 percent off plus free shipping and you too can enjoy america's number one meal kit now let's get back to the video so obviously you know you've been doing social media for a long time now yes. um how did you get started on social media what was that moment that you're like oh shit like i'm popping so this is the backstory so after I graduated high school, I wanted to prove to my mom so much that I was going to be successful. So I enrolled to like a like community college. Like, no, like, what is that? Like, kind of like American Career College, you know? Okay, yeah, like, yeah, uh, yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, but it was like, I think it's called IU, EUI or something or something or IUE. Like the ones where you just go and get the degree faster. Yeah, for like yeah, eight yeah. months, you know? Yeah. Like, get your degree in eight months to be a registered nurse. Like, no, but it's really a medical assistant. Yeah, right. So I went there. <laughs> I got kicked out, bitch, because I didn't have a car. And I would have to take three buses to get there. And my homegirl, she would never pick me up. So like, I'm on the way, girl. I'm like waiting three hours. I'm like, are you gonna come get me? No, she never came get me. So I got kicked out. I didn't want my mom to know that I got kicked out. So I enrolled in American Career College and I got my car for the first time then. So I was actually driving to school. But you know what? I realized I'm kind of dumb though, because I thought going to nursing school, I was gonna be in the ER. And they're like, you can't have nails, you can't wear makeup. I didn't know that I could have been an aesthetic nurse. I could have done Botox, yeah. filler, and like that's only four years and that's not long. Sandra's a nurse now. Can you believe it? Your friend Sandra. Yes. That is crazy. She's, gonna, she's like going to be, she wants to be in the ER. And the day I went with her, orientation day, and the lady's like, do you want to sign up? I'm like, fuck no. So you would already go. been a nurse. Yeah, but no, Sandra says it's expensive and a lot of like depression and suicidal thoughts. <laughs> and I'm like, girl, are you okay? So my mom's like, that's it. 
you're going to West Virginia. You're doing nails with your brother. My nail, my brother had a nail salon after, by when he was working for somebody else. She told you this after she found out you got yeah. kicked out and everything? Yeah, because after I got kicked out of American Career College, they enrolled me into nail school by Valley. Okay. Yeah, and then I would ditch. And I need to go for my hours to take my test. Yeah. And they're like, my mom said, give me the school number so I can call and you're going. I gave them my classmate's number and she's fluent in vet. So she could be like, no, she is going to school, but I really wasn't, you know? And my mom found out like, why does your school have WhatsApp? Like, you know, like that doesn't make <laughs> sense, you know? Like, why do they have Viber, you know? And who's the fuck is Lynn? Like, that's not your school. That's not your friend. I'm like, that's how she found out. And my brother was like, this fucking bitch, just send her over here. So he... Brought me over. He taught me everything. And my brother's not nice, bitch. Like, you think doing yeah. nails, it's a different. There's a certain way to polish. There's a certain way to file for the test. Your own technique on how you do acrylic as a nail tech, that's your own technique. But the state board is different. Yeah. So I went over there. But I was already making videos. And my brother went to work with his wife every single day for like fucking eight hours. So I was at home by myself. So I got all of these ideas just brooding in my head and I would execute them and I blew the fuck up. And then my first brand deal was like 300 bucks. And I was like, bitch, I'm getting my lips done. I don't give a fuck. And I went and they're like fucking natural as fuck because they don't do the LA like lips the over there. Like the crazy lips in yeah, Virginia, yeah. yeah. And all of a sudden, Fashion Nova hit me up. And no, I actually messaged them. I'm like, I would love to work with you. They're like, we're only going to give you free clothes. I'm like, fuck it, give it to me. I don't give a fuck. And then one day, they're like, you do so well on your discount code. We're going to pay you. And then Lola, uh, Lola Shutik at the time. Uh -huh. uh, Miss Lola. Lola. now. Love her. Love Ray, too. Amazing people. Jen Gerard came. Vanessa came. Maribel came. Elsie came. And then you came. And You're then like, no, I think I was already... You were already there. Yeah. You even told me, you're going to pass me in a following. And you did. And I'm just like, no, I'm not. I lost my account at 80K. I told myself, maybe this is not for me. I'm just going to make a new Instagram, but just to like keep up with people, but I'm not going to promote it. I went to sleep, woke up to 100K. Yeah. Went to sleep again, woke up to another 100K. I grew 200K within 48 hours when the algorithm was good. Yeah. Yeah. And that's not the same no more, girl. I'm shadow banned now. But I was just like, damn, I'm really popping. I realized I was actually really legit when I got recognized in another state. Yeah. In Virginia. And I went to Ohio. Yeah. Is that a state? How was that? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, and, and it was a black girl. And the thing is, like, I never knew black girls liked me like that. And she was like, I love you. You're so fucking funny. And I'm like, oh, really? Thank you so much. I love it. And when people started taking pictures with me, that's when my parents were like, what the fuck? Like, they actually like you? We think you're fucking stupid as fuck. Honestly, that's how it got started. But I was doing nails, and I would come home, and I'll be really tired. And Christina, the one that owned Debt Makeup, she was okay. my manager at one point. I she, remember. Oh, my God, yes. Uh -huh. Yeah, she was my manager at one point, And she was like, what's wrong with you? Like, you haven't been posting. You need to make your content. I'm like, girl, I do nails. Like, I do, like, nails from, like... 10 in the morning till 6, 7, 8 o'clock at night. And in West Virginia, they take prom, winter formal, like any dance very seriously because yeah. it's such a small town. They know everybody there. And I'm tired. And I had a long distance relationship with Richard. I didn't even call him most of the yeah. time. But long story short, I got, I came back to visit. Yeah. That one for that one couple, like a week or something. You had a meet and greet? Yeah, I had a meet and greet. I came back. Me and my brother got into the biggest fucking fight. I didn't go to work the next day because I said I had a headache. Booked my flight, packed my shit, took the fuck off. Texted my brother when I was on the plane. I left. I'm not. I'm. I'm leaving. And if I really need you, I'll come back. He fucking rushed home. He's like, this fucking bitch really fucking took off. <laughs> yeah. And he's like calling my mom. My mom was in Vietnam, so I couldn't even really calling her. Yeah. But like he called her through Viber, which is an app. I called my dad. My dad's like, you know what? You're older. Whatever you want to fucking do with your life, you fucking do it. You do it. Yeah. yeah. And the thing is. It took a really long time for me to build up the like uh, money to be able to move out. Elsie came in. Elsie bought my bed for me, bitch. Yeah. Period. Elsie bought my bed for me, bitch. Jen Gerard paid for my couch. LA girl paid for my fucking deposit for my rent for my new apartment. Period. So like all these people that came into play, I respect it. Yeah. And look at Elsie, way more popular than me. <laughs> you're like bitch LC you know what's so milk. crazy talking about LC and you know the whole OTD fam um, they actually bought me that mirror that's up there oh they I actually remember, gifted I remember, it to I me remember, yeah yes. I love them yeah and like the fact that like 
even the Marilla twins, when they came over to my yeah. house, they're like, we want to be like you and Alan and Annette. We want to like be on the game. Like, like we work at Metro or something like that. I'm like, trust me. Look at them now. Yeah. And the thing is with my, my regret in social media, that I didn't save my money. And you used to tell me that all the time. No, I remember that because <clears throat> talking, you know, you guys always hate when I fucking talk, but I feel like I have the right to because I actually know Wendy on a personal level. When me and Wendy were like this, um, back in, I want to say 2016, 17, that's when it's 2017, 2016 yeah, before the BBL, before the BBL, BBL, Wendy, yeah. um, Wendy was making money and yeah. I feel like I was barely starting to wet my feet. I mean, I was already doing beauty videos, but I wasn't Alanized. I wasn't who I am now. You know, obviously I feel like you had bigger engagement you were getting bigger brand deals you were you know getting out there and i remember seeing wendy every other day buying a new designer bag buying this new and i would always be like bitch like save your money i want to be like nah i have money i can spend it and it's crazy that now thinking back you're like bitch i should have fucking saved it yes and even during the pandemic with my business i did yeah. the same thing and you know what it's a learning lesson i'm not broke yeah. i'm not poor i'm not on the street i I'm still very humble, but you know what? A hard time does have to humble you because I really felt like I was untouchable. And when I started posting that I was doing Instacart, Uber Eats, yeah. oh, ha, ha, you're a stupid bitch, you're broke. I'm like, hey, if I wasn't an influencer and I did this for a living, you wouldn't talk shit though because it's really an eight to five job. Yeah. People make good money doing Uber, you know? And that's the one thing I respect about you, the twins. They really made their money, saved their money, and invested. And I felt like I had nothing to show for Cause I went broke trying to look rich and I regret it. I really do. But you know what? Life happens. I'm still young. Yep. There's people that are still 40 that just bought their first home. Yep. Some people who are just turned 50 that just got married. You know, everyone has a different stamp, like, like a life stamp in their point. Yep. And I feel like it's going to happen for me. One it day. will. It yeah, will. Yeah. And I feel like you're, like you said, you're still super, super young. And the good thing that you learned that lesson at a young age yeah. to now, now where I just you're say like, I'm broke. I'm like, you want to be, it's I'm, better. Yeah. No, I love saying I'm broke now. Like I say I'm broke. I don't have money. They're like, they're like oh, really yeah. bitch. Yeah. And I'm like, no, I'm like, I, like girl, I have a, I have a Tesla, model Y, not even yeah. the X, not the one with the bird wings. Like yeah, I, yeah. Don't, I didn't go all the way. I did the calculations for the monthly payments. I, can't yeah, uh, I was like, oh no, 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 I can't do that. I'm going to low downgrade to a model Y. So realistically, that's like the one thing I do regret not saving my money. And I feel like I see new influencers yeah. coming into the game and they're falling into my old footsteps. And I would love to share my two cents, but I don't know them, so I don't say that. But you know what's so crazy? I feel like that's something that, you know, even though, like, you may sit down here and be like, wow, Alan, you've saved your money, you've done good. Yeah, I feel like I have done good, but also I did go through, like, a point in my life where I was being stupid with my money. I feel like that comes with a territory, too. Like, you grow up thing? with no yes. money, yes. and you get thrown all this money. Like, I'm going to fucking... Be fucking real, you guys. Like, as much as, like, stressful, as much as, like, some can say, like, oh, my God, this job is so hard. Yeah, it's hard. But, bitch, we're over here getting paid ten, twenty thousand dollars $20,000 to take a motherfucking picture. Like, yeah. so when you get thrown so much money at you, it's so, and especially when you grow with nothing, you're like, girl, yeah. like, I got money. Like, yeah. I can spend. And even if you go into, like, my office, there's literal designer bags. Yeah. You brand never, new you that were, I've never used. You were never into designer when yeah. you were hanging out with me. You were like, you don't need that. I'm like, shut up, Alan. I'm never shopping with you again. <laughs> and then me fucking getting the Yeah, later. you would never enable me. He'll be like, do you need it? I'm like, you're never coming with me to South Coast ever again. Like, ever. I don't yeah. even think, I think I only shopped with you like twice. Well, yeah. And I'm Every like, time I'd see you, you'd be like, I got a new bag. Yeah. And, I'm, and you're like, like, you're like, why? And I'm like, just yeah i'm like because i want it and i'm like because i want it's it it's so crazy you know what it was one thing i remember you remember that one time um i remember even me because obviously being online i feel like it's very easy for people to think like oh they have money they're rich they got it but there was times in the beginning of my career and also in the beginning of wendy's even when she was blowing up when you were blowing through your money you remember we would sit down in the fucking in your apartment and we'd be looking for like craigslist jobs like yes. what should we do you remember that i mean yes. we never did any of yeah, them but yeah like, we never we would we just be like, like we should get a job hey 
I was like, dude, we're influencers. Why don't we be PR people? Yeah. Because we know other influencers. And like, I was like, dude, should I do this? This is a waitress job at the strip club. Mm -hmm. And remember when I was always showing my boobs every time yeah. with you and Danny? I was like, blah, 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 blah. So like, I was like, we could do it, but we never ever executed it. It was like, just yeah. like a thought. Do you like, feel like now being on social media for so long, was there any, like any hardships or any moments that maybe you haven't shared that like, really shows you like the real the real life of being an influencer i feel like a lot of people can't do what we do they think that they can but they don't and the thing is like how majority of them are bullies themselves yeah they come onto our platform talk all the shit about us and they're being a bully but when we talk shit back oh how can you do that how can you say that you're an influencer like shut up bitch like get on indeed get a job with this energy like shut yeah. up so they never knew the times where i wanted to fucking kill myself they didn't know the times I wanted to drive, get, get an Uber and go to the ocean and just walk in and drown and fucking die. They didn't know shit like that. Do you feel like social media, you know, you, you're talking about, you know, the time where maybe you wanted to commit suicide. Do you feel like that was because of social media? If, if so, in what <clears throat> way? No, I think it's just more of like me just being depressed because I'm a high functioning depressed bitch. I feel like I can never genuinely be happy. Even when I was making really good money, I'll buy a bag and it will just go away. I'll be like, oh, I'm done. Yeah. So what's a new thing? I'm like, like you'd be happy for the moment and then you're like, bitch, yeah. I'm sad again. Like, what do I do? Yeah. I think the comments don't. The thing is, when people say that they don't give a fuck, that's a lie. Yeah. Because we're human. We yeah, all no, give yeah, a fuck. we do. Yeah. yeah. But the thing is, it's how much we let it affect us. It might let, I might be affected for a day, but someone could be affected for a month, a year, two weeks. It just depends. There's days where I've opened messages, typed all this shit out deleted it i was like fuck you i'm done because i looked at your forehead your forehead's big you're i'm already winning so i'm over it you're no. like bitch i ain't got yeah. time to fight with you yeah, yeah. Like, i was like miss mega mind shut up yeah, I don't care. <laughs> so you know it's just yeah. like the thing is we could say the sky is blue someone could say it's turquoise stupid bitch and you can never win yeah you no know? it's true and yeah. i feel like that's a, a point that you're touching that i feel like you know now now me today i am very vocal about because before you know there'd be days where i'd be like oh i don't give a fuck but bitch you'd be crying in your fucking room at night or you'd be thinking about the comments that you're getting let you me know? ask you something ask if you would have never got your surgery would you be happy right now as of how happy you are now i honestly feel like no exactly obviously like you know when i was overweight i was living my life i was going through it because i mean what else can i fucking yeah. do i wasn't and, gonna sit and down you, you were dealing with a lot of personal issues in yeah life too yeah so i feel like when people see us change ourselves we're changing ourselves for the better yeah a lot of people like to say oh you got plastic surgery you're fake you're 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 bought not built okay but i invested into myself it's a lot of money, mm -hmm. dedication. I still had to work out, you yeah. know? Like, it's not that easy. And the thing is, like, I watched this girl on TikTok. She cried because she's like, I'm so fucking ugly and I don't know how to fix it. And in my mind, I would like, girl, just get surgery. Yeah. But if I type that out, how can you fucking say that? Like, everyone, not everyone wants surgery, but me, I never went through that. Cause I never wanted to cry cause I was ugly. I was just like, bitch, I have to make money to make myself prettier, Yeah, you know? And Tony even said to himself, the noodle challenge we did, he's like, fuck no, I would've never dated you in that video. He's like, you look beat the fuck up. He's like, Wait, you he look. Wait, told you that. He oh told me. God. He's all like, damn girl, you are round as fuck. And I was like, yep. Yeah. Do so you feel like, you know, getting plastic surgery? Because for those of you guys that know, Wendy started getting plastic surgery before even BBLs were a trend. Yes. I feel like you were the first person I ever knew that had a BBL. You yeah. know what I mean? I never knew BBLs existed until junior year in high school when I found out. And I was like, this is game over. Because I only thought boobs were a thing. Yeah. And when I found out that you could take your fat and put it into your butt. So I still say... It's still my butt because it's just fat. It is. It's like, your I fat, just yeah. transferred it to another area of my body, you know? Do you so, feel like that helped with your mental health? Do you feel like getting surgery like made you confident? Oh, yeah. It made me confident. But also, I think getting a BBL now that it's so popular and every influencer has it, you know, because yeah. they want to look good, you know, and I love it. I love Louis BBL, by the way. I got a consult with his doctor, so I love his. Um, it's a mental thing. A lot of people think it's going to make them happy. It made me happy. But then it also made me realize I changed myself to look a certain way. But then I also noticed that I 
still was a little insecure because of the way I heal. I scar easily. Mm-hmm. So yeah, I wasn't flawless. And you know how you help you compare yourself to all these IG bitches? I compare myself. Yeah. People might think I'm a bad bitch, but there's other bitches that I look at. I'm like, I want to look like her. Yeah. But then another doctor told me, everyone wants to look like everybody else. We're influencers. We have to remember how they look on the internet. They probably edit it too. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So we have to see them in real life. I've met influencers in real life. Other, And I'm like, oh, you're not. No, you're not what I thought you were. <laughs> and you know what's so crazy that you're touching base on that? Because I feel like you really do have to be in a good mental state to be able to like, because yeah. even after surgery, I feel like me, obviously I'm the happiest, but now after losing 150 pounds, there's things, maybe not my see. loose skin, but there's things like my scars that yes. I'm like, fuck, I can't wear crop tops because my scars are fucking yeah. there. And they're, pay- they're nitpicking at you. And the thing is, all those people that were talking like, oh, you, you just got surgery, you didn't even lose weight. What are they doing? Yeah, talking shit. Yeah, they're still fucking fat and ugly and what? And the thing is, I don't really care using the the ugly and fat word because in real life, there is ugly people inside and out and everyone is beautiful to their own extent because, bitch, just know I wouldn't have kids if I looked before how I did. Nobody (laughs) would have fucked me. Like, not even my baby daddy wanted to fuck me back then. He told me straight out, you look fucking ugly, girl. I wouldn't fuck with you. So, you know, and that's just other people's opinion. But I just see a glow in you after your Thank surgery. You. And the thing is, like, I'm so happy you did it because I could tell that you were sad. Uno nunca va a estar feliz. No one, you're never going to be happy. You're your you biggest know, credit. Exactly. Yeah. So like, even after looking so good, even after going through all these surgeries, there's always going to be something that you're like, fuck, now this is bugging me. Like, yeah. we're never going to be happy. So I feel like I'm going to stay in my life where I'm like, you know what? Stop focusing on the little things and just look at the bigger picture because, bitch, you, a year ago, you would have loved to be at the place you are now. So fucking enjoy it. Seeing you like this, I'm like, it's like you never aged. I I I mean, I never recognized you. I never noticed you like that. And you showed that video. I was like, I never recalled Alan being that big. No, literally. You you are a big bitch. No, bitch. I literally look back at that video and I'm like, why did no one tell me? And they're like, bitch, we did, but you would get mad. And I'm like, <laughs> <laughs> like, uno nunca gana, you guys. So, you know, obviously you were talking about you rising to fame, going viral, not once, but multiple times in your, you know, beginnings of your career. And as the years passed by, it almost seemed like you took, you know, a step back in producing content and just, you know, kind of living your life to the fullest offline you've also been super vocal about how hard it's been for you to like keep up with social media and how like you don't really care about the numbers anymore do you feel like there was a reason for that or why do you feel like that okay so i got shadow banned after the black lives matter movement and a lot of asian hate and you know like you know what's so crazy i really took a step back the black lives matter movement and like the asian hate thing was supposed to spread awareness and like you know support but people were like uh, looting, right? That's the word where they were like smashing things. Uh There there was more hate than love if you really thought about it, you know? And like I got shadow banned because like I was defending the Asian community and I was speaking my parts about the Black Lives Matter movement. And I guess like Instagram doesn't like it. And also I talk shit a lot, you know, when yeah. people cop back and I type in keywords like bitch, stupid, whatever, like they get mad. I told a bitch to go drink bleach. I was like, yeah, whatever. So yeah, I'm like, girl, at this point, I don't really give a fuck. Like, like you're, you're disrespecting me. Bitch, have a nice glass, cold glass of bleach. Like just drink <laughs> it, bitch. At this point, after my relationship with my ex Richard, I told myself, I don't want to be on IG with the whole couple thing. Tony at the time. Just got out of prison for two years. He's like, I'm not with the whole social media thing. I don't want to be on there. But, you know, I support what you do. Just don't put me on there. And I respect my man. I love him. I'm like, all right. Yeah. Just like back then, people would always want to know who Jenny's man was. Like, why can't you respect his peace? Yeah. You know? So that I understood, you know? But eventually, Tony, like, you know, he, uh, he like, uh, warmed up. And now he's doing videos with me. And he's okay with it. He's all know? part of it he, now. Yeah. yeah. He's happy. But... At the time, he wasn't down. Yeah, he yeah. didn't want to, but nothing for bad reasons, you know? But I just told myself, you know what? I'm tired of living a life on social media where I'm not happy in real life. I'm going to take a step back, live my life in reality, and actually enjoy my real life, and that people who really want to fuck with me will stick around, and brands who really want to fuck with me will still work with me, yeah. and if they don't want to fuck with me, then fuck them. And I know who my real fans are, my real supporters, because I message them, I talk to them all the time. Yeah. yeah, I talked to, I follow some of them on my personal account. 
So they know more about my real life than the main people, you know, on my main account. Yeah. So I tell myself I lost a lot of following. I yeah. was almost at 500K. I'm at like, what, 309? Yeah. yeah. I'm basically like, I lost a lot of my following and my engagement is not that good. I feel like now I'm happy where I am. I got a consultation recently with for uh, lipo and like my boobs to be done. He told me straight up, if you would have had a better following, I would have gave you a better discount. But your following's not that good. And I'm like, oh. So that comes into play. But then I also remember, the more followers you have, the more drama you're going to have. And the more haters you're going to have. I don't yeah. want to deal with that bitch because I'll really fight you on site. If I see a bitch that follows me at a club in Newport, bitch, I'll throw hands with you. I recognize everyone's face. I don't give a fuck. I'll take off my wig right now. You're like, I'll do it, bitch. I'll do, it. do you feel like, you know, stepping back took, you know, a big hit in Oh yeah, absolutely. And Tony felt like, did I did I kind of ruin your career? And I'm like, no, because I decided to do this. Yeah. And you know what? It's not too late. But the thing is, I am shadow banned. So even if I tried really hard, even if I did like ten thousand followers, I mean like giveaways a day, it's shadow banned. That's why I made a new account, Miss Wendy Fam. <laughs> you know what Tony's on yeah. but like I didn't even really push it that well because my main is on but on my main account but my TikTok's doing really well yeah yeah I'm I saw you that. did another TikTok yeah. and I see it going viral here yeah. and there yeah yeah so I was happy with that but overall I'm happy in real life not on social media and we're all human we all go through our little funks where we're sad but just know I'm doing good. I'm okay. I'm okay. And I feel like I see, you know, when I do see you online, it's very much like, okay, she's doing good. I feel like, you know, you became a mother and I feel like that saved you in some way. You know what I mean? Because oh, yeah, I was hella, 100%. Yeah. Because I was hella addicted to fucking drugs. And yeah. we can get into it. You didn't even want to be my friend anymore. You're like, you're a bitch, you're weird. <laughs> no, literally. You know what's so crazy? You know, we can sit down here and I can actually reflect on that. I think it I want to say my part. And you can say your yeah, part. Yeah, say okay. your part. You know that I used to be addicted to Xanax, which mm -hmm. is bars, right? I was doing it because you didn't really know what I was going through with Richard. Yeah. And I did it to avoid Richard. And you're not supposed to be doing it and drinking, but that I would do it. Yeah. And then it when you're on it, you're not yourself. You get aggressive. You lie. Yeah. You steal. I told you to your face, I didn't take one today. 20 minutes later, I took one. Yeah. You, like, you just told me you didn't. I'm like, no, I didn't. The day I left Annette's house that night, when I was with you guys, I couldn't even drive home. I had a friend come pick me up because I couldn't drive. Yeah. And I would take six a day just to, because I needed it. I thought, I need my fucking Xanax. If I don't have it, I cannot function. Like, it was it was bad. And Richard, stop taking it. You're not yourself. Shut up, bitch. You don't know me. But when I got with Tony and he saw me act out, he's like, oh, hell no, nah, bitch. I'm not gonna be with you if you're gonna act like this. You're yeah. weird as fuck. I don't date. A, I'm not dating a druggie. You're you're too pretty of a bitch to be a druggie. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I'm like, oh my god, I love you so much. I'm not gonna do it no more. And I'd be like, ah, I'd be getting my little urges. Done. But I'm not gonna lie. That night that we went out, I took one. When recently? I took one. That's why I was like, uh, 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 that's why you're fucking and, going yeah, through the bottle. You know why? Because I don't drink like that no more. Yeah. And I when I used to drink, I was on it, and you're not supposed to do that. Yeah. You know. So that night, I was fucking lit. So, uh, I someone pushed Mo or accidentally pushed Brit, took ice, fucking chugged it at that bitch. Romero was like, hey, relax. What are you doing? I'm like, I'll fight her, bitch. I don't give a fuck. But Brittany's like, oh my God, Wendy, you always got my back, girl. I'm like, yeah, like, I don't care, but that's the bad part of Xanax. Yeah. You don't give a fuck. Alan, I was stealing at Sephora. Not telling you which one, though. They can't arrest me now. Yeah. yeah. I was a different person. And then you reached out to me. You're like, I don't want to be your friend no more. No, it was bad, you know, on my end. Just because I feel like people, especially in the beginning, you know, I feel like when you were going through that, I'm going to be honest, you guys. This is like, ah, it's all an inter intervention, bitch. We're yeah. all like making no, up. No, it's because you weren't doing drugs either. I weren't. I wasn't doing drugs. Not that I'm doing them now. I feel like the yeah, only thing know, I do just, now is literally yeah, smoke weed. Do but when I met Wendy, um, I was literally underage. I was 17, 16 at the time. And Wendy was already, what, 23? Yeah. yeah you were 23. Wait, yeah? 
No, 17. You were overage. You were over 21. And I remember at the time, if you guys have been following me for a long time, yo en ese tiempo, pues yo no fumaba, yo ni tomaba. I didn't even drink. I remember I had, you know, I grew up with my dad being an alcoholic and seeing how that was affecting, you know, my family, you know, my mom, their relationship, not just my parents' relationship, but the way my dad would be with us. You know what I mean? So I feel like for a long time, that was a big reason why I waited till I was 21 to actually even take a sip of alcohol. And when I met Wendy, I was in high school. All my friends were 16, 17. Wendy was literally my only 21 and over friend. Yes. So when I met Wendy, you know, obviously her lifestyle was that of a 21 year old, was that of someone going clubbing, was that of someone always smoking. Mm -hmm. And, you know, you know, when I would see that, I didn't really care too much at the time because you know i was like, used to it i was used to the drinking i was used to the smoking in and some we, extent and the thing is when we hung out i didn't do it with yes her. Yeah. it was very much like like she said you know we would hang out and then she would go on with her day go drink and do all that stuff with her friends yeah but i think it got to a point in our friendship where you started doing it around me and i will sit down here and be honest with you it was scaring me you know it was scaring me seeing how you would get seeing how bad of lies you would throw at me because you know where i told you that i went to mars that i didn't want to come to your <laughs> bitch no literally you had said someone's mom had died and no i said yeah, you had I said did. that. See, yeah, I don't even remember. Probably. See, no, it, I might have said it was my mom. If anything, <laughs> it was it, the lies were crazy. You guys, was, you know, it was bad. to the point where you know. I remember for one of my birthdays. You I know, think that was one of my last straws, actually. <laughs> yeah, it was. It you was. Know, I and remember. Who, guess what? Do you remember? We don't need to say the name. Who added me? Oh, she added you? She's not like, she's at home. What are you talking about? <laughs> no, no, no. Not even that. No, oh. she, you outed yourself. So I remember my last straw with Wendy. You know, I feel like, obviously... I wish I could have done more for you, but as a kid, well, I wasn't even, I think I wasn't even 21 at the time when we stopped being friends. I think yeah. I was like 18, honestly, 19. When I, I honestly just didn't want to go to your birthday because I was so fucked up. Yeah. And the thing is, if I went, I would have been like, I don't think I could act normal. And he said a no. Yeah. And he's already been pressing about me not doing it. And that's like pressing me like, are you on it? I'm like, no. You're like, and this is me. No, I'm not. On a Xanax. Like, you guys are crazy. That's how I talk when yeah, I'm on it. Yeah, I know. It's and like, crazy. Like, a lot of people, Maribel's like, you're not yourself. Maribel's like, what's wrong with you? And then, like, Jose would be like, you want to go to prison? I will show you how the, the bad people look like when yeah. they go, when they're addicted to drugs in jail. And, like, I just couldn't get out of it. I dealt with it a lot, you know, with you. You know, like, I would see how you would get. I would see not just the lies towards me, but with everyone around you. And are you okay with us talking about this? You know, obviously you brought it up and we've talked a little bit about it in the last episode. For me, the last straw was, I remember it was my birthday. I think it was like my 19th birthday or 18th. I don't remember. Um, I didn't want to do shit. At the time, me and Wendy were like this. Obviously, we were going through a bumpy road because, you know, she was going through her addiction at the time. And I remember you had said someone's mom had died and that you were out shopping for, you know, her, not the grave, but the actual casket and i felt really bad you know i felt yeah, really bad I think about it wow the drugs really no it was crazy yeah. you know the lies like at the time i was like oh my god bitch don't come like go deal with it like i'm so sorry you're going through and this at home, like <laughs> no bitch no not even that i yeah. remember that same night as i was at dinner i see your stories and you're all getting fucked up at the club so to me you know as one of her closest friends or at least at the time i wanted to feel like we were close oh and then the next day i realized that the person you had said had died wasn't dead yes. you know and to me it was really a big like oh shit like she's gone like she's her, gone her mind's gone yeah her, you were gone you know <clears throat> so to me as someone so young and not yeah. even being around it i was like you know what i feel like and i had also had a lot of numerous you know talks with you where i was like hey wendy i feel and like you need to you talk to me four or five times. Yeah. You finally put your foot down. And that's the thing that I respect too because I wouldn't tolerate it till this day. Yeah. I had a friend that was getting addicted to it and I told her, I don't think you should do it. And she got addicted. She started ha having the same behavior that I had. And I'm like, oh my God, I fucking know what Alan went through now. Yeah, like, I understand. I'm like, yeah. oh my God, this is not good. Like, I don't yeah. like... And the thing is, the ones that I were taking were not even like the prescription ones. They were the press ones that you could get on the street. Yeah. That's laced with fentanyl. 
Oh, and shit. Bachelor. I could have died. And I'm over here taking five a day, living my life. I'm fucking grateful that I never died. Or, I am too, or, bitch. Oh, deed. Like, I blacked out twice in my life. Where I woke up, don't remember anything. Only twice. And I was addicted for what? Like, two years straight? Yeah. Mm -hmm. It was hard. So, obviously, you know, after her going through all that, I feel like when I finally saw you get pregnant, like, even though we weren't talking at the time, because I remember, you know, we kind of stopped talking and, you know, even till this day, like, our relationship isn't same. the yeah. same for what it was, what, what it was, from what it was once, from what it once was. And, you know, when I saw you get pregnant, I got really happy because I really did see how that changed your life. Mm -hmm. How was that? You know, you find out, you get out of this long, you know, relationship and then you get pregnant. How was that? How life changing was that for you? Well, to be honest, I was checked out of the relationship with my ex for so long and I was still on it, the drugs. Mm -hmm. And then I got with Tony and I was still on it. He finally saw how I was when I was on it. He's like, hey, are you like, on anything? Like you're kind of really weird. I was like, oh yeah, I do Xanax a lot. He's like, fuck no. You're disrespectful. You're a crazy bitch. Like, I'm not going to fuck with you. Like, you're like, might as well just fucking smoke crack at this point. Like, you're such a pretty girl. Why are you doing this? And like, drug addiction is really, really bad. Yeah. Like, it's, it took me a lot of strength to listen to Tony. And maybe it's because there was something in Tony that I didn't see in Richard that I valued enough to stop. Yeah. I'm not going to lie. I've had my urges. I just told you I took one last Saturday, right? Or yeah. whatever. Mm -hmm. And it's the good ones. The one from the duck. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Those are the those prescribed. Are, yeah, the, the good ones. But you know what? It is an addiction. I don't do it like that. Especially with children. Fuck no. I don't do it around my kids. Hell no. Yeah. I microdose. So, you know, learning process. I like to get crazy once in a while, but no. That was just a one-time thing. I had fun. Um having kids changed me because can you imagine me with my kids and acting yeah. like that? Fuck no. CPS would definitely take me No, definitely. Away. And yeah. I feel like, and that's why from an outside in, that's what kind of made me very happy because there was a point where I was like, fuck, did I literally, you know, stop being her friend at the wrong time? You know what I mean? But I definitely like saw that, you know, the pregnancy and you becoming a mother gave you a whole 360. It almost was like what was meant to be for you. Yeah. You know what I mean? How was your <laughs> pregnancy? I know you had hard pregnancies. Oh, with your first one. My first one, I was just, uh, first pregnancy, a lot of nausea, but I got skinny though. Yeah. yeah, I got really skinny with both kids. Just a lot of nausea. Zofran came to play. Labor was easy. It was fine. Um, but yeah, it was nothing too bad. Um, guess what? I saw Richard on Sunday. This Sunday? Where? Um, let me let me think. Was it Sunday or Saturday? It's one of those days. Um, I was hanging out with my homegirl. She has a homeboy. We were at this tequila place drinking for the for the fight, uh -huh. and then they wanted to go to the library, which is a strip club in Anaheim. So they were talking, chopping it up. I met a couple of his homies, and I recognized this white guy. I was like, this guy looks like he hangs out with Richard. Because I'm not going to cap. I used to stalk Richard's girlfriend. Yeah. And I'll be like, they look the same. And he kept like t looking at me, and I was, and I would approach him and be like, are you Richard's friend? But I don't want to be weird, you know? Yeah. And I was like, no, oh, whatever. I'm like dancing with the strippers because they think that I'm a stripper myself. And yeah. they're like, you should wear All bomb body yeah. and everything. Like, I was wearing like shorts and I'd like, I put it into like a thong looking like, I'm like, I'm bored. I'm gonna walk around and make money right now. And like, I kid you not, I turned around. I see Richard and his girlfriend and his girlfriend's homegirl. She came up to me. She's like, hi, babe. Nice to meet you. I was like, hi, nice to meet you officially. Um, she's really, really pretty. Was it awkward no. seeing him? no. He's just fat. I told him to say, he's like, yeah, fat. How does it feel? I feel like you used to make fun of me yeah. all the time. Yeah, but the thing is... Because it was that... I feel like also going back to, you know, your plastic surgery, I remember you telling me that a big part was because of how your partner was making you feel. Well, I did the BBL for myself because I wanted a big butt. Yeah. And I thought, oh, if I get myself my body done, Rich is going to, like, not kiss his hands off me. He's going to love it. No, girl, he still didn't give up. It, I think it's just... Maybe that's a maybe that's real of him. Like it didn't really matter about the body. It was just me. Yeah. And as we got older and we became like not like friends, but like we would catch up once in a while via phone or text. I asked him, if you were so unhappy at one point, why didn't you just leave? He's like, because you were making money and you paid for everything, and I loved it. And I'm like, this motherfucker. And when he said that, it didn't even trigger me because I have no emotions left for him. So I was like, fuck you, suck my dick, like you know. But 
a lot of guys don't care. Like, if you have money and, you know, like, they want to fuck you once in a while, I think they don't really give a shit. But his new girlfriend, gorgeous girl, he lied to me and told me she used to be a follower of mine. She doesn't follow me no more. But we follow each other now on my personal account. Um, she's really cool. She's really cute. Um, he told me that she unfollowed me because I got a BBL. And she's young. She's like, yeah, Wendy doesn't love herself. She got a BBL. Like, I don't fuck with her like that. So that's what he told me. And I told her that when I finally like Oh, at her. the club recently? And no, no yeah. the next day when I, we were DMing each other. She's like, why would he say that? I unfollowed you because I felt weird. that like, you know, I used to follow you, but now I'm dating him. And like, I was just like, oh yeah, well, I don't know. She's like, honestly, like, I when you did that podcast thing with Richard on YouTube, I could understand your point of views. And till this day, I never spoke ill about his girl. Yeah. I, I don't hate her. I think she's gorgeous. I also think you're past that. Like, yeah. that relationship is literally in your past. So why are you going to entertain, like, a hate or yeah. to hate anyone? Because at the end of the day, Richard plays no important, you know, place in your life now. And Richard fronts a lot. My friend talks to him because, like, they do business together about something. And he be asking about me. And he's like, bro, like, I made her squirt so many fucking times. I mean, that bitch comes so many times. I squirted with Tony. I never... Sex with Richard back then was him fucking me, him nutting, and I was off the You're bed. done. Yeah, I probably came by with him, like, maybe five or six times in all my life. I squirted with Tony. The first day. Yeah, yeah. so I'm like... And I had sex with Tony for the first day. I never ro rode Richard because he's like, damn, bitch, you big, get off. But Tony's skinnier than Richard. He'll be like, Take that <laughs> shit. he want to give up. How did bitch. you meet Tony? Because I remember when you met Tony, we were already not talking. So it was, I mean, we would talk here and there, but it was never like, fill me in. Like, what's the tea? How'd you yeah. guys meet? How'd you guys meet? I've known his brother for years. And a lot of girls find Tony's brother very attractive. Like, if I showed you a picture of him, you would probably think he's good looking. Okay. But he liked my old friend, Selena. Okay, okay. I remember yeah, her. Like, I remember. Yeah yeah, 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 yeah. But like, him and his brother, no, me and his brother would always click. Like, we always DM bitches. Like, hey, she's bad. Nah, she's bad. Like, yeah. We like rating BBLs together. And when he posted one day, my bro's out from the pen. And I'm like, what the fuck's the pen? Which is prison. Yeah. And I was like, damn, you're the ugly as shit, bro. Compared <laughs> to you, like, you're way, you're the, we know who the yeah. good looking kid is. Not, not your fucking brother. Not your brother, yeah. Yeah. But then that was like when I was still with Richard, though. I was just stalking him, you know? Yeah. I didn't think he was cute or anything. When I broke up with Richard, Cinco de Mayo, I forgot what year one had pink hair. I uh -huh. went to the club. I saw him. And I, I caught, he caught my attention while he was talking to his friend and he was laughing. And I was like, wow, he has like personality. In Vietnamese, it's called ka ying. Like, ka ying. Oh, like when you watch somebody and they're like, oh, like, they look so Like you're just attracted like, by just I was, watching I was them. like mem mesmerized by the way he smiled and his demeanor. Yeah. And when I walked over there, he already knew who I was. He had a phone in prison. He yeah. knew who I was. And like he was... In love, ready, committed, ready to fucking get married and shit. And I literally told my brother in law, I DM'd him, like, your brother's out from prison, right? He's like, yeah, he's been, it's been two years. I'm like, oh, call me your sister in law. And his brother is known to be like a man slut. Yeah. So he's like, you're never gonna get my brother. You're like, bitch, you, yeah, you, two weeks you wish. In, I literally sent him a picture. Look who just sat on my titty. Yeah, and he's all I'm like, dead. and the fact that he's like, I can't believe like you really fucking bagged my brother, bitch. Like you really fucking did that. And, yeah, and he's like all for it. He's like so happy that I'm with his brother, and like it's just crazy. I never even knew his brother existed the whole time. Ever. And now you're with him. Yeah. How how many years are you guys together? Like it's already been like uh, five. Yeah. It's been that long, yeah. bitch. Yeah, and it felt forever with Richard, but like with Tony, went like that. That is fucking crazy. No, because. I could have sworn you guys were like three, four. Oh, yeah, five makes sense. Yeah, it's been yeah. a long time. This year would be like six. Ya para terminar la entrevista, what is next for Miss Wendy Lee maybe tomorrow in a year or in five years? Bitch, my, buy a fucking damn house. Period. Yeah, like, finally, it's time. Yeah. Like, I don't want to rent no more. Thought about relocating to Texas, but it is kind of hard with the kids. I have yeah. to really see. I don't even know what part of Texas, but I know I can get a nice house in Texas. Like, yeah. Do you see the house? It's I have. House. They're huge. I feel like if I would have saved all the money that I made here, I would have bought fucking four houses probably in Texas. Yeah. And I have like nothing here. So sad, huh? But anyways, like I said, we'll get there one day. So I don't know. I'm just living life, letting it go day by day. Um, 
I am now on OnlyFans. But you got to see. You might see my cooch. You might not. I don't know. People Are you like, showing everything? No. I'm just doing not little yet. teasers. I'm going to do like little POVs. You know like those Fashion Nova try on hauls? Okay. But I'm going to be like, babe, does this dress look sexy on me? I'm going to be like, ow, babe, why did you smack my butt? I have to go to work. We can't fuck right now. Like, me? Yeah, like, like little POVs, like little yeah, teasers, yeah, yeah, yeah. you know? Because I respect. That's what men, but yeah, that's what men they get like onto it, you know? Because yeah. if I wanted to do porn, that's shit up porn. Yeah. And that's free on Pornhub, you know? Yep. Some guys do pay for like only fans but like i i had a relationship with tony he's like you know what i kind of don't want you to do only fans because i respect you so much and i see you at a higher value but he doesn't understand we need to get a bag right now yeah. and do you want a house or no <laughs> you know and the thing yeah. is like life is so short i'm not gonna be this young and beautiful forever yeah you know why not like one day when we live in texas and we have a beautiful home mommy paid this with her boobies Me? like you know like yeah no think it's about real it. though, though. yeah the the amount of money people make on OnlyFans is crazy. Yes, because it's just a people like it. And you know what I realized? I never noticed girls be posting stuff like that on for on feed. Instagram. Yeah, I went on my feed. I'm like, damn, no wonder guys cheat. I just saw three bitches just post photos in lingerie yeah. for the free. And Tony's like, you used to gotta work for them back then. You used to take them out on a date. You gotta freaking buy them yeah. stuff. Now you could just go online and look at a shit for free. And I'm like, who are you looking at? He's like, you? And I'm like, fucking liar. You're like, that's right. Uh, no, I'm like, fucking liar. That's crazy, though. So, you know, you just started doing OnlyFans. They can find you under Miss Wendy Lee or Como. Um, So, with OnlyFans, I am under MZ Wendy Lee. Um, okay. The miss was taken. So, they can find it on there. I haven't posted anything yet. I want to get a bit of a following on there. And then I'll start posting. And then I'm going to make, like, really fun content. I'm going to do, like, cosplay, role-playing. I might do, like, dick ratings. Bitch, I'm y'all yeah. about to subscribe. Like, I give your dick a 4 out of 10. She's all going to yeah, crush like, people's hearts. But, you know, some people like that, you know, right? Yeah, it's I've degrading. seen. You know what's crazy? Yeah. I've actually seen. I have a friend that does OnlyFans. And she tells me that there's guys that are like, can you please rate my dick? And she's like, don't be sending me dicks without me approving them. Yeah. Like, it's a whole thing. Yeah, they like it. They like to be... I mean, you're in the LGBT community. Yeah. You could be, you're very surprised of like a, how many guys like want their ass eight and stuff. Like no, that. yeah. And like they're straight. So, yeah. All right, you guys. So with that being said, we are approaching the end of today's interview. Thank you so much, bitch, for coming on and just, you know, having a combo with me and just really, you know, just sitting down here and not just speaking to me, but speaking to the people watching as well. I know a lot of people watching at home are going to be able to relate to you in one way, mm -hmm. you know, um, or in many ways, you know, yes. because I feel like your whole story and your whole upbringing is, you know, very relatable. And I feel like it can really inspire people watching at home to, to feel not alone yes thank you so much for having me and with that being said you guys don't forget to follow wendy on all her social medias that i'll leave down below and as well as on the screen y también no se les olvide seguirme me on all my socials para que no se pierdan any future episodes and with that being said thank you guys so much for watching and again thank you so much for being here thank you for having me and we'll see you guys in the next one bye guys